الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد continuing brothers and sisters we this beneficial book that was written by Sheikh Al-Allama Muhammad Ibn Salih Al-Uthaymeen Rahimahullahu Ta'ala Sifat Al-Salah The description of the prayer Ala dawi ma warada an Rasulillahi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam In light of what is established Upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And we reached Kama alimtum As you're aware The opening takbir, alhamdulillah, alladhi akhadnahu fi dars al-maadi We will continue inshallah with this topic, barakallahu feekum So Shaykh Ibn Asaymin, he said, Ikhwan, and this, the reason why we've decided to come downstairs from upstairs because we agreed with the brothers originally that when we discuss the sifa, the description of the prayer of the Prophet wasallam, we will do so where everyone can see. So some brothers are unable to get upstairs. Now, so alhamdulillah, we are here. Jazakum Allahu khayran. And alhamdulillah, the believer, he strives to fulfill his word. The believer strives to fulfill his word. A question may arise, what about the sisters? Good question. Inshallah ta'ala, we will try and put some pictures maybe online to highlight some of the mistakes. But at the same time, that's the, important, the importance of what? Seeking knowledge with your husband. If your husband was here, alhamdulillah, it would be easy, right? Everyone agree with that? No. But if you're on one page and your husband is on another page, Wallahu musta'an wa alayhi tuklan. And no doubt, nothing brings people together more than learning and striving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even us as adults, as men, sitting together like this in the masjid, in the most beloved place, Allah azza wa jalla, alhamdulillah. No doubt that it's a ni'mah to sit amongst brothers, alhamdulillah. We ask Allah azza wa jalla that he grants us success. In a time where other people, you know, they're busy sending around pictures that they've chopped up from using what they call it uh, Photoshop. They can't even do that properly. Let the foolish do what they do. Let them talk on Instagram or Facebook or wherever they want to talk. La yadurruna, alhamdulillah. If we stay busy learning our religion, inshallah, and striving to fear Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, then the promise of Allah is true. Allah Azawajal never breaks His promise. Tabarak wa ta'ala. So, Shaykh ibn Athaymeen, he said, وَمَعَ هَذَا التَّكْبِيرِ يَرْفَعُ يَدَيْهِ مَضْمُومَتَيْ الْأَصَابِعِ مَوْسُوطَةً إِمَّا مَعَ التَّكْبِيرِ So he said, along with this takbir, saying Allah Akbar, the opening takbir, the person, male or female, raises his hands with his fingers together and hands stretched out. So I'll show you. In the Sunnah, alhamdulillah, we have, it's established that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la yufarriju bain al the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would not open his fingers all the way out, nor would he keep them stuck together. So I'll show you. Naam. But before we proceed, let's talk about the pronunciation of the takbir. How do you say the takbir? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. What does that mean? Allah is the greatest. Who can highlight two mistakes that we discussed in the previous lesson? Hassan, give me one. As it pertains to saying the takbir. Uh, when you make the, the mahdi on the Give me an example. Like Allah Akbar. Naam, when, if the person elongates the ba, saying Allahu Akbar. And a'udhu billah, what is, what, what's the meaning of Akbar? Muhammad, no one scream out. It's a tabal, now a drum with a'yadu billah. So look how it, it totally distorts the meaning. By adding one alif to the ba, with a'yadu billah. What's the second mistake, Umar? Uh, you uh, add the istifam. Now, when you add the istifam, how? Allahu Akbar. 
Allahu Akbar. You're saying, is Allah the greatest? You're asking a question. And that again totally distorts the meaning because when we say Allahu Akbar, it's a statement. Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest from every angle. And I mentioned the benefit that the Shaykh Ibn Athaymin, and I told the brothers I shared it with you in the lesson. A Shaykh Ibn Athaymin said, when you say Allahu Akbar, it is so appropriate because غَابَتْ عَنْكَ dunya kulluha. The world should disappear before your eyes. Why? Because at that point, you're standing before the one who is greater than everything. From every angle. Allahu Akbar. So going on, the Shaykh now is discussing. So Alhamdulillah, he's highlighted how it is pronounced correctly. And again, how many people make the mistake with this pronunciation? Musibah, calamity. That's why it's important. Important for us what? To seek knowledge, li tasheeh al-ibadah. Not so that we can pretend to be a scholar, or pretend to be something that we're not. No. So that we can correct our worship firstly and foremostly. Making sure we worship Allah as we do correctly. So the Shaykh, he said, وَمَعَ هَذَا التَّكْبِيرِ يَرْفَعُ يَدَيْهِ مَضْمُومَتَيْ الْأَصَابِعِ مَوْصُوطًا With this takbir, he raises his hands. The Shaykh said it here with his fingers together and hands flat open. And we said, Ikhwan, that comes in the son of the Prophet ﷺ, لَا يُفَرِّجُ بَيْنَ الْأَصَابِعِ He would not, you know, stretch out his fingers. So this is a mistake. Some people, they make the takbir like this. Everybody see it? And if the brothers are here, and the, Alhamdulillah, your wives are here, you can show them. So if somebody goes like this, and you see people doing it. Like I said, well, inshallah, the more we discuss and we talk about the correct way to pray, it will become clear. Like, subhanAllah, how many people are not praying correctly? So the brothers at the back, meaning like, it should not be like this. The hand should not be like this. It should be like this. Is that clear? Just normal. I'm talking, I'm not showing you where they're meant to be. I'm showing you how the fingers are meant to be, meaning stretched out, the fingers are stretched out. Not like this. Some people, they go like this. See how they bend the fingers like a rabbit. You see it. Some people like a rabbit. That's wrong. Because it would be stretched out. The, hand, the, the fingers would be stretched out, meaning straight, and they would be like this, alhamdulillah. Naam. Is that clear to everybody? Tayyib. Jazakumullah khairan. So alhamdulillah, with that, you realize, well, illa alham, some mistakes. Again, just to make it a bit clear to describe to those who can't see, I'm saying the fingers should be stretched out, the hand should be flat, stretched out. Naam, the palm of the hand should be facing the direction of the qibla. Palm of the hand facing the direction of the qibla. The fingers are not ex stretched out to the extent, how would you describe that? Like a spider. Naam? Naam, you don't stretch your fingers out. Huh? Like a spa. Like a spa. Tayyib. Is that clear? Tayyib. So therefore you know the mistake of people. And you see people who are... Some people do this and they're brought up in Muslim countries. They make the tabiyah and their hands are point towards their face. They go like this. Like this. Allah Akbar. But the palms are not facing the tabiyah, it's facing their face. They go like that. That's a mistake as well. So is that clear to everyone? Inshallah, we're going to discuss some mistakes, inshallah, as we go along. The Sheikh said... And this is a, a beautiful benefit, and it's all established in the Sunnah. The raising of the hands, imma ma'a takbir. It can be done along with the takbir. And the proof of this is the hadith collected by Imam al Bukhari, min hadith ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma. From the hadith narrated by Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, and collected by Imam Ahmad and Abu Dawood and others. And likewise, collected by Ab Ahmad and Abu Dawood upon the authority of Wa'il ibn Hujr radiallahu anhu. So the Sheikh said, a person can raise the hands with the takbir. And this is collected by Imam al-Bukhari from the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, and likewise by ah Imam Ahmad and Abu Dawood from the hadith of Wa'il ibn Hujar radiallahu anhu. What does that mean? A person, somebody show me. Somebody show me what does that mean? You can say, the you, yani, you can say the, raise the hands with the takbir. Who can demonstrate to me? Without screaming out. Fadlan. Allahu Akbar. That's along with the takbir, right? No, but your hands are a bit straighter. Tayyib. No, no, not out. Straight with your body. Oh, you Yes, as far as here. Tayyib, we're going to get to that, inshallah. Now, with the takbir. So, for example, the person standing up straight, he says, Allahu Akbar. Meaning, with the takbir. 
So when you say Allahu Akbar, you raise the hands. Is that clear to everybody? So that's one way it can be done. Another way, or qabla takbir. You can raise your hands before saying Allahu Akbar. And this is, the Shaykh he said, this is found in the hadith, collected by Imam Muslim, narrated by Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu ma'ayla. Who can demonstrate that? Abu Bakr, tawadal. Ahsan, with the takbir. So the person says, Allahu Akbar. So he's raising the hands when he's saying the takbir. Is that clear to everybody? Wadih? Somebody doesn't understand, ask me to go back, inshallah. Allahu Akbar. Tayyib? So you raise your hands before you say the takbir. That's clear? Tayyib. The third, or ba'd the takbir. After you say the takbir. And this is also found in a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Collected by Imam Muslim in his Sahih from the hadith of Malik ibn al Huwayrith radiallahu anhu. Wal amr fi hada wasi'. Shaykh ibn Athaymin said, Alhamdulillah, this is wasi', meaning you can choose any of the three. So the last one was what? Ba'd al takbir, after the takbir. So a person says, Abdul Muhammad, fadl, give me the example. After the takbir. After the yes, fadl. So I, I say Allahu Akbar first, right. then I raise my hands. Is that clear to everyone? Yeah. So who can repeat quickly to me the three ways and no one's screaming out? Sheikh, give me the first. The first one is to say the takbir with, with Now the first one is to say the takbir saying Allahu Akbar and raise the hands at the same time. Next to you. What's the next one? Yes. What's your name? Abraham. Lala, on the other side. Huh? Samir. Samir. What's the other one? Ahsan, you raise your hands before the takbir. Next to you, what's the brother next to you? Huh? He's not Muslim. Inshallah, you will be. You interested in Islam? Inshallah, we'll, uh, later on, Inshallah, we'll explain to you the meaning of Islam. Okay, Inshallah? Naam. What's the third? Abdul Majid. Without looking. Naam, Ahsan. Jazakumullah khairan. After the takbir. All of those three are found in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu If somebody chooses one, la yulam, alhamdulillah. If somebody chooses one of them, alhamdulillah, he can't be censored. Why? All of that is established in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And again, ikhwan, let's just highlight mada. When we go on to the next point, we'll highlight, inshallah, what is correct, and then highlight some errors as well as to go with it. Then the shaykh, he said, wa rafa imma. Where do you raise your hands to? He said, إِلَىٰ حَدْوِ مَنْ كِبَيْهِ يَعْنِي الْكَتِفِينَ So he said, firstly, إِلَىٰ حَدْوِ مَنْ كِبَيْهِ يَعْنِي الْكَتِفِينَ To the level of the two shoulders. And this is agreed upon مُتَّفَقٌ عَلِي مِنْ حَدِيثِ ابْنِ عُمَرَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمَا Again, the proof of this. So the shaykh is not quoting the whole hadith. He's referencing it for you. Alhamdulillah, if you want, the number of the hadith, alhamdulillah, is mentioned, you can return back and read the hadith, alhamdulillah. So he's just referencing it for you and giving you the proof, walillah, alhamdulillah. That's why if somebody researches this and implements, alhamdulillah, prays in accordance to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu and they study it and they base it upon proofs, they're not blind following now. They're basing their position upon what? Proofs. People are quick to say, you know, I don't blind follow. And they don't even know what blind following is. Blind following is what? You follow the statement of someone else without any proof. Here we're not, it's not following the statement of someone without any proof. No. It's based upon the ahadith of the Prophet And that's why alhamdulillah the person should return inshallah if he can or she can and look at these ahadith alhamdulillah especially the shahid the point or the, of the, or the part of the proof that is relevant to the issue being discussed. So, إِلَىٰ حَلْوِ مَنْ كِبَيْهِ يَعْنِ الْكَتِفَيْنِ Who can demonstrate that? Allahu Akbar. Ahsan, tayyib, la bas. To the shoulders, Allahu Akbar. This is the two shoulders here. That's clear to everyone? Naam. So a mistake here, some people they want, they make the takbir, and they put it to their, ch- to their chest, they raise it like that. What are they doing? Exactly. Some people they go like this. And even worse, and that's some... Allahu Akbar. What's that? It's not a press-up. Sheikh Yahya. Sah? 
It's not press up. You see some people they go, Allahu Akbar. What's that? It's not a press up. Huh? A push up. Pre- <laughs> a push up. Naam. So it's not a push up. Some people it's like they can't even be bothered. Bothered. Some people they go like that. Allahu Akbar. And they raise it just like this. That's incorrect. Now, the first, I said it's a mistake to raise it just to your, the level of your chest. So somebody is just at the level of your chest, that's a mistake. No delay for that. To raise your hands when saying the takbir to the level of your chest. That's clear? Now, some people, they put, when they say the takbir, it's like they push up. Allahu Akbar. Like they're doing a push up or press up. Now, al istilahin that is name. So, both of them, that's incorrect as well. Another mistake that people they make, they, they leave a huge gap between their hands and their body, so they go like that. I can't, I don't know how to describe this type of... They're, they're, trying, huh? they're trying to grab the bar. It's like somebody done a field goal. That's what that, isn't it the referee when he goes like that, field goal? <laughs> uh, I'll put your hands up. Now. No, <laughs> You know, some people, you see them go like this. What's this? Now, like the brother said, like if somebody, the police is telling them, stay still. That's wrong as well. Why? Because the raising of the hand. See, this is important, Ikhwan. We learn this, alhamdulillah, firstly for our own selves. Awalim. So, alhamdulillah, we can follow the command of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallu kama ra'ayta muni usalli. Pray as you see me pray. The one who's going like this, Allah Akbar. He's not praying like the Prophet wasallam prayed. And likewise, the scholars, they mentioned, if we see people making these mistakes with good manners, with good manners, we point it out, Ahi, this is the sunnah. There's no basis for this. Naam. Here's the delil. Here you can read it. Here's a book. Here's a tape. Ila If we all had that mentality, alhamdulillah, imagine how much the sunnah would spread. That's not usually the case, though. What do you mean? Well, when you say something to somebody, people usually get upset or take offense. Unfortunately, that's true. Even, for example, in classes, some people get upset because they're asked and they get it wrong. Why are we getting upset? This is learning. Well, lie, this is the best place to get something wrong. Because, alhamdulillah, we'll be corrected. So, Ni'mah, the Salaam used to say, Rahimullah, Imra'an. May Allah have mercy upon a man, he highlights to me my mistakes. Meaning what? Not just for the sake of saying, you have this, you have that. No. So we can correct it. It's a blessing from Allah Azza wa Jal. That somebody says to you, Akhi, this goes against the hadith. No one person knows everything. It's impossible. We're going to make mistakes. We're human beings. We're going to know certain things and we're going to be ignorant of other things. No one person knows everything from amongst us. So alhamdulillah, it's a ni'mah to be around brothers who are going to say, Akhi, that's a mistake. The sunnah is kada. It's a blessing. And if somebody corrects you in a good way, Alhamdulillah, make dua for them. You know, Alhamdulillah, thank them. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said it, Man sana alaykum ma'rufa, whoever does good for you, naam, then you should repay it. If you can't repay it, then make dua for them. Then the Shaykh said, O hadhul udhunayn. Or a person can raise the two hands up to the ears, the level of the ears. As collected by Imam Muslim in Hadith, Malik ibn al-Huwayrith, radiallahu anhu. Tayyib, or when they say, Allahu Akbar, meaning up to the level of the ears. Yeah, inshallah, that's going to come as well. Up to the level of the ears, meaning the ears. Or the third way the Shaykh he said, Naam. So the Shaykh he said, the, the second to the level of the ears, meaning here, to the level, meaning to the level of the ears. It's going to come. So you see the ear? That's the way the ear starts, right? So Allahu Akbar. Is that clear? Or, Furu'ul Udhaneen. To the level of what? The top of the ears. That's the top point. The level of the top of the ears. Allahu Akbar. Is that clear? The to- either to the level of the ear or to the top of the ear. The level of the ear here, meaning the bottom of the ear, or the top, the sheikh is saying, or to the top of the ear. Is that clear to everybody? No above the head. It's not takbir. Allahu Akbar. No. It's coming. Another error 
as the uh, Abdul Aziz wa kadhalika akhuna Rashid both of them they asked about people touching their ears with their hands when they say the takbir so they, some of them put their finger in their ears so they say Allahu Akbar that's no origin for it whatsoever naam again as i said they face it with their palms they point with their cheeks Allahu Akbar no basis for that whatsoever so is that clear so far that's why there any questions show big up what did the sheikh say okay so you have three ways that you can do it what should you do a sheikh ibn al-taymin is on the position he said if al hada marra do this once meaning to your shoulders once and then maybe raise to mada to the level of your ears once why if al hada marra do this on one occasion that on another occasion limada my question to you why why does the sheikh yufaddil hada fadl abu abd rahman all of them established from the sunnah but why not just keep one it shows other people the sunnah لا بس طيب that's one way نعم طيب إحياء السنة giving life reviving the سنة reviving the سنة of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم نعم and also to implement everything what is established from on the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم نعم سيد إحياء السنة حفظ السنة أحسن also they say so it just doesn't become like a habit or a custom, something you just do without thinking of the wisdom or the reason why. We do it because it's the son of the Prophet wasallam, the best of mankind. Now, a sign of us loving Allah is that we follow the Prophet wasallam. Now, if somebody wants to look like a rapper, that's a sign that he has some type of love for that rapper. The believer, he wants to emulate the Prophet wasallam. Why? Because he loves the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the Prophet is the best example. Now, so we've highlighted also, Ikhwan, some of the errors as it pertains to the raising of the hands. All of them are in opposition to the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The errors that we highlighted, and Alhamdulillah, we clarify what is established in the Sunnah. Then, Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin said, "Al hikma fi raf al yadain in the takbirat al ihram." What is the wisdom behind raising the hands? When saying the opening takbir, and remember, the opening takbir, if a person doesn't say it, there's no prayer without it. If somebody does not say the opening takbir, there's no prayer. So if somebody says, Ahi, you know, I remember I was praying, but I didn't say the opening takbir. Ahi, you have to start your prayer from the beginning, because you did not begin it. Or sister. So, what is the wisdom? Firstly, at ta'asib Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imitating the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if a person, if somebody asks you, why do you raise your hands when you pray? We say, Because the Prophet he raised his two hands. That's firstly. Secondly, thirdly, the second one of the, another wisdom, indicating the greatness of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Thalithan, the third wisdom that the Shaykh mentioned, and the Ba'd al-Ulama qal, some of the scholars they mention, they say, and there's a mistake in the book, Ikhwan. Again, remember I said to you about translations, there's a khata because it missed out the second. And they mentioned the third as being the second. Huh? So the second is, the scholars have stated, this is, in t- this is to indicate, or oh, this is to glorify Allah Azza wa Jal. This is to glorify Allah Azza wa Jal. That's the second. Secondly. Thirdly, some of the scholars they mention, رَفْعُ الْيَدَيْنِ إِشَّارَ إِلَى رَفْعِ الْحِجَابِ بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ حَتَّى تُحْضِرَ قَلْبَكِ The third, some of the scholars have, um, have stated that raising the hands is indicative of removing the barrier, it, يعني, of removing the barrier between yourself and Allah so that you focus with your heart. So when you make the takbir, they say that this indicates that the servant is removing the barrier between yourself and Allah Azza wa And therefore you focus solely upon your prayer with your heart. And you recognize. When you recognize that you are standing in front of your Lord, speaking privately to your Lord, Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. So you recognize that you are standing in front of your Lord, speaking privately 
to your Lord in the manner that someone privately addresses another directly. Subhanallah. Now, so they were the three things that was mentioned by a Sheikh ibn Uthaymeen concerning the wisdom of raising the hands when saying the opening takbir. وَمِنَ الْأَخْطَاءِ فِي الرَّفْعِ الْيَدِينَ From the mistakes, the Sheikh likewise mentioned some of the mistakes when raising the hands. أَنْ يَرْفَعَ يَدَيْهِ لَثَدْيَيْهِ And we mentioned that. That some people, they raise their two hands to the level of their chest. Who can show us? Fadl. The error. Abdul Wali. Naam. Ahsan. Some people, they raise it here to the level of their chest. And you'll be amazed how many people do this. Sheikh ibn Al-Thaymin, he said, هَذَا عَبَثْ لِأَنَّهُ مَا أَصَابَ sunnah." This is an error. And in reality, it's futile. Why? Because the individual has not implemented the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he's raised his hands to his chest. The third, he said, and The third, that he enters his index finger into the inside of his, two, his ears. Because this is done in al-wudu, and that's what the brothers asked. That you put your finger in your ears when saying the takbir. That's no basis for that whatsoever. The third, the Shaykh, he mentioned, and Yamusul Udanain in the Rafi Yadain. Again, that he touches his ears when raising his hands without putting the fingers in the ears. And again, this is not correct, and there is no basis for this. There's no basis for that whatsoever. Now, moving on. Then he places his right hand either. Now, the chef's going to mention three things. Where do you place your hands? And we know he will go on to mention, you place your hands wa mahallu wa al-iliyadayn imma. And that which is correct, inshallah, will mention is ala sadr. You place, the Shaykh he said, the right hand ala dira'i al-yusra. You place, the Shaykh he said, the right hand on the left forearm. And this is collected by Al Imam al Bukhari upon the authority of Sahil ibn Sa'd radiallahu anhu, who said, This is in Al Bukhari. The people, he said, the people were commanded to place the right hand on their left forearm in the prayer. How is this? I'll show you, inshallah. Barakallahu feekum. This it is to place the hand here. Inshallah, it's going to come. So, for example, your, your right hand is over your what? It is over slightly on the forearm and on the wrist. Can everyone see it? See it? Naam. Everybody see it? I'll stand up here. Everyone see it? That's the forearm, right? So here. So here's the wrist. Here's the wrist. And the chef is going to go on to explain when he talks about al qab actually holding and placing. So that's the wrist. This is the forearm. This is the hand. So the hand is placed on what? On the wrist, so on the forearm, and slightly on the wrist. You see it? But you, uh, that's clear to everyone? Yeah. Now, another mistake some people they make, they make with regards to this, they hold their elbows. They hug themselves. Yeah, they hug themselves. <laughs> now, some people pray like this, Ikhwan. They hold their hands like this. They place their hand on their elbow. As Sheikh ibn Uthaymini mentions, with regards to that, placing the, the hand upon the elbow, he said, Laysa lihaba asl. That has no origin whatsoever to put your hand on your elbow, like you're hugging yourself. That's a mistake again. How many people do that? Even those who you would think, again, would know better. But Ikhwan, knowing better, the way to learn, we're not going to learn through dreams. That's the way of the Sufiya. They say you can learn the religion through dreams. You're not going to learn from the internet, Facebook or Instagram. That's the way of the Sufaha. That's the way of the foolish. You're not going to learn your religion from there. Rather, that's only going to confuse you more, Wal-Iyadu Billah. Unless you focus upon what's beneficial. You're not, we're not going to learn our religion just through Qil and Qal. It's learning. إِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ بِالْتَعَلْمُ Likewise, the Shaykh, he said, Oh, ala liyad al yusra. You can just put your hand. You can place your hand on the left hand. You just place it, the right hand on the left hand, on the left hand. Bayib, not on the forearm, on the left hand. 
Is that clear? That's wadih, ikhwan? Tayyib. Aw ala kafi al-yusra wal-rasga wal-sa'id. Or upon his left hand, wrist and forearm. And it is as if, wallahu alam, with this, that the shaykh is indicating, because he mentions it also in Mada al-Sharh al showing the difference between these two ways. Either you place it or you hold. Al-Qab wal wada Either you place it like this. Is that clear? On the hand itself. Or you could place it on the forearm. Alaykum as wa rahmatullah. And we said on the forearm, slightly the wrist. Is that clear to everyone? Or you can mother make al qam you can hold. You can make al qam fayaj'al tarf al yad al yumna ala al dira. Or you can make al qam you hold the hand like this. Holding from the wrist. Is that clear? Naam. You hold it. See here? See I'm holding it. So it's either like this, or like this, or like this. Is that clear to everyone? As long as even you can place on the forearm if you want. So in case of being in his right hand, he can place it on the It's not allowed for you to hold the elbow. Right, right. Yes, whatsoever. Even if there's no one next to you, even if there's people next to you. What you have to do is, like I said, either like this, you place your right hand on the left hand, or you take hold of your hand, known as al-qab, the left hand, like kada, or you place your hand on your forearm, as I explained. From the three ways that the Sheikh Ibn Uthaymi mentioned, so he said, the third, or upon his left hand, wrist and forearm. Thus he places the edge of his right hand on his forearm and the palm of his hand over his wrist and the beginning of the top of the hand. And the Nasai reported this from Wa'il ibn Hujar. And it's as if the Shaykh is referring here to Al-Qabd. As I said, the holding. Some people make a mistake, Ikhwan. They don't hold and they don't place. It's like they're doing the two of them together. So it's like the, the baby finger and their thumb is around their wrist. But still, they just place the hand on top of their arm. Can everyone see? So they're not holding and they're not placing. It's a mixture between the two. That's a mistake as well. Either you place or what are you, or you hold. Is that clear to everyone? No. It's the same as Sifat Salat in Nabi, just a bit different. Then Ikhwan, Mahallu, and we'll close with this inshallah. Mahallu wad al yadain. Where to place the two hands? Where do we place the two hands? Shaykh al Uthaymin said, Ala Sadr rawahu ibn Khuzayma fi sahihihi wa sahahahu wa wa asahu shayin fi fil bab. That it is narrated by, it is collected by Ibn Khuzayma in, in his authentic collection, and in reality, all the ahadith are not authentic, even though it's given that title. And Ibn Khuzayma, he declared it to be authentic. And this is the most authentic hadith in this matter. This is the most authentic hadith in this matter. However, in the chain of narration, there is an individual known as Mu'ammal Ibn Ismail Suduq Say al Him. He is truthful, but he has a bad memory. However, this hadith has support in narrations. As Shaykh al-Albani said, Yani yataqawwa bishawahid. Meaning this hadith is established in sound due to supporting narrations, to place on the chest. That's established in the sunnah. Apart from that, the Shaykh al-Bani said, either it is weak or it has la asla lahu, or it has no basis in the sunnah whatsoever. Meaning it's fabricated. Either other than placing on the chest, either it is mentioned in a weak hadith, or it's mentioned in a hadith, a narration, which in reality is not a narration. It has no origin. It's been made up. It's fabricated. Then the Shaykh Ibn Uthaymi mentions two other ways. But as we said, Ikhwan, these are not established and they are weak. Tahta surra, below the navel. And this is narrated by, this is collected by Imam Ahmad and Abu Dawood. Upon Ali radiallahu an, waqal min sunnah And he said that this is from the sunnah. However, in the chain of narration is Abdurrahman ibn Ishaq al-Kufi. 
ضعيف بالاتفاق who is weak unanimously with agreement of the scholars of hadith فالحديث ضعيف this hadith is weak below the navel as we said any hadith mentioning the placing of the hands when standing in the prayer other than the placing on the chest is weak or has no origin as mentioned by Sheikh al-Bani another sifa that is mentioned or فوق السرة above the navel However, again, this is collected by Abu Dawood upon Ali radiallahu an, in fi'li, from his actions. Wafihi, one of the narrators is known in the chain, there is a narrator known as Abu Talut. And Abu Dawood said, Yuktabu hadithu mina is weak. The hadith also is weak. So where is established? That which is established in the sunnah is to place where? On the chest. On the chest. Naam. Below, but this weak. No, no, one after that. Uh, above the navel. Oh. The one was below the navel and the other one was above the navel. Kilam Madaif. Also, Ikhwan, some people they place their hands nearly on their neck. Some people they place their hands on their neck here. Yeah, you don't place your hands on your neck. That's not your chest. That's your neck here. It's on your chest. Also, some people they put their hands on their heart. Sheikh Ibn said that's a khata. Huh? I mean, the scholars mentioned it, brother. Alhamdulillah, hey, it's old. The ulama talk about it. <laughs> Some people, they place their hands on their heart. They put the left hand on the heart, and then they put the right hand over the left. They say they want to touch their heart. Shaykh Ibn Uthami said, that's a khata as well, that's a mistake. No delir for that. And rather, it takes away from al-i'tidad, the person being balanced and upright in his prayer. Fa'idat al-hikmah min dalik, Shaykh Ibn Uthami goes on to talk about the wisdom. Now, you on the heart, right? On the heart. Yeah, some people, yeah, on the heart, here. So that everyone can see me, look. So some people, they pray like this. They put their hand on their heart, and they pray like this. That's a mistake. <laughs> what did you say, Shaykh Yahya? Shaykh Yahya said it's like the Pledge of Allegiance. I don't know what that is. Wallahu a'lam. But that's how they, they place their hands in the position on their heart. That's a khata as well. The hand should be placed on the chest in the three ways that we mentioned. Either like this, or like this, or like this. And inshallah, we'll post, alhamdulillah, with, the, with, with regards to that, there are pictures, alhamdulillah, in a maqala that was reviewed by Sheikh Muhammad Bazmul, we'll put them online, inshallah. With regards to those pictures about how to place the hands, inshallah, we'll put them online. Khaddam. Faidat al hikmah min dalik, the wisdom behind placing the hands on the chest. Sheikh said also, at ta'assi bil Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, imitating. The son of the Prophet وسلم, imitating the Messenger of Allah وسلم, This is a principle, Ikhwan. Somebody asked you, why do you place your hands on your chest? I'm following the son of the Prophet The principle is, and this is a comprehensive principle, and anta mu'min, tafa'alu ma fa'alahu Rasul You are a believer and you do what the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he practiced and what he done. Wa tatruk ma tarakahu, and you abandon what he abandoned. Whether you understand the reasoning behind it or not, that's important. Wallahi, ikhwan, that is means that al-mu'min, that's the quality of the believer. Sometimes he doesn't understand it. But if he's saying Quran and Sunnah, his heart is munsharih bihi. Why? Because he knows it's from Allah Azza wa the whole wise. Whether he understands the reasoning or not. But those who have amrad fil qulub, shukuk, they may have doubts or sicknesses, they only accept what they understand. That's the way of the people of falsehood. And that's a way to go astray, may Allah protect us from it. If it's in Quran and Sunnah, we accept it whether we understand it or not. Whether we understand the reasoning or not. You hear some people, when they speak about matters of the religion, it's like they're correcting the Sharia. No, this is not good. And it's something in the Quran or in the Sunnah. And they tell you, no, it's not good because of A, B, C, and D. Are you more knowledgeable or Allah wa ta'ala? نسأل الله السلامة والعافية. نعم الحكمة الثانية. The second wisdom. الوقوف هكذا وقوف ذل. When you stand like that. When you stand like that, that is a standing of humility. When you stand with your hands on your chest. When you stand with your hands on your chest. It is a standing of what? Humility. It is a standing of humility. 
tadilla bayna yaday aziz muqtadir azza wa jal. And no doubt, it is deserving, it is upon you to stand in this way with the standing of humility before Allah, the Almighty and the All-Powerful. So this submissiveness before the one who is Almighty. الوقوف هكذا وقوف ذل وحق لك أن تذل بين يدي عزيز مقتدر عز وجل فهو ذل بين يدي عزيز. So this is a standing of humility before the Almighty, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Inshallah, we'll stop there, Ikhwan. The Sheikh is going to talk about, you know, how do we stand upright, the way to stand, what to do with your eyes. Some people, you know, it's like they close their eyes. <laughs> Like they're going to sleep and they're praying, this is a mistake. And then Shadow will read the words of a Shalim Ibn Uthaymi. Some people say, no, but when I'm praying and I close my eyes, I can contemplate, I can, I can think better. Best guidance is what? The guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, so we'll stop there, inshallah. And the next dars will continue with what? Inshallah. Any questions so far?